So they go to Jerry's Deli, and then we got in a, like some kind of altercation or a tiff. Yeah. Bobby <laughs> Brown. All those friends are still our friends. Sarah Michelle Geller, Jerry O'Connell, Macaulay Culkin. Right. So she grew up with Donald Faison coming to my house parties when I was in high school because they were like, what's a real party like? You know? And then here comes Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, you know, and Paris Hilton's got a, a pocket full of... And the next thing I know, the guy's producing a movie starring Christopher Walken, like right. a giant movie. It won the 2013 Annie Award, which is like the Oscars for, for animation. Those that can endure will be rewarded. Hi, welcome to 90210. This is another episode. I'm your host, Jessica Entner, and I'm sitting here with my co-host. Dan Eisenstein. And today we have an amazingly special guest. They're all special, aren't they? I say that every time. They are. Don't forget to like and subscribe before I forget. That's the thing you have to do. Um, we have father, husband, director, producer, and brother of Tara Reed, Mr. Tommy Reed. Yeah. Thanks for having me here, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming so, on. So fun to already pre-talk with you. Yeah. I can't wait to hear all the stories. I know. And I'm sober. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, an, hold on. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's an understatement. Hold on. I just came from MedMen. <laughs> well, we just found out we have that in common. So that's good. Yeah. So, Dan, I actually have never met you. This is the first time I've I have never met, met you. Either. I know. It's very nice to meet you. We've probably been in the same room together before, but this is the first time we've we've gotten to. I, I think you would have remembered. Well, you know, LA is a big city, but, and, and right back at you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are friends yeah. and have known each other for God, a it's long almost time. 25 years. I've known you, Tommy. So, no, we were there for, I was there. Was it April, May? So he and I met in New York at the New York Film Academy. Okay. Yeah. Dave Faustino, whose name's come up a million times <laughs> on this podcast. We should just call it David Faustino's yeah, friend. Yeah. He, this is right when Married with Children ended uh, he said, hey, I'm going to take this course in New York. It's an eight-week course, and we're going to make uh, 16 uh, short films over, over eight weeks. We, do you want to come take this course with me? And I said, yeah, for sure. Let's do that. A couple of days before we're about to leave, he gets a pilot with Whoopi Goldberg, and he mm -hmm. says, I'm going to be a week late. So you go and you start, which I wasn't too thrilled about, but I went by myself. And the very first day, I end up sitting next to this guy. And he walks in in like a black leather trench coat. Yeah, that's right. And we didn't know if he was Tony Soprano or... There was no Tony Soprano. Oh exactly. But like, yeah. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? He's big. You know, oh he looks he's very like, Imposing. very nice. And so like, of course, I buddy up next to him because, you know, a small guy like me has got to always be friends with the big guys. Well, just in case. Tommy was like muscle. a comic. He had me cracking up the entire morning. There was a, a Canadian guy in the class. There was like one other American girl and then a lot of Europeans in the class. Right, so, right. And who barely spoke English. And Tommy had me rolling the entire time. So we smoke a joint during lunch and we go have lunch and everything. And so we started buddy up and I'm like, okay, so you got to come back and you got to make a film crew of four for your whole duration now. So this is going to be like your brothers. So as you go into like, you know, filmmaking and everyone has to rotate from DP, director, cinematographer, and like basically PA. And so like week one, you do this and everything. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, well. I got Dan and then Justin O'Connor. Was it Justin Does, Connor? Justin Connor. Justin yeah. Connor um, was like the BMXer. So I'm looking at Dan. Okay, well, let's close the gap and let's get that, you know, one girl who's asking all the Who questions. Was very, she was really smart. She, very smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now myself being a Buckeye, I'm like, you got to go with the smart people. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, yeah. once I find out he's a Beverly Hills Jew, I'm like, oh my God, this is like done. Yeah. Yeah. Done. So he's like, let's, I got one spot left. Yeah, so let's go get either Rolf, the German DP guy, or go get the smart girl. I was like, well, no, my friend, uh, we got we to gotta hang this, hold this spot for my friend who's coming a week later. And Tommy's like, no, no, we're not going to do that. Your friend's late. That's his problem. He's, we're not going to be a week behind. He's not going to put me behind. I'm like, listen, <laughs> Tommy, it's my friend. He's like, no. I'm like, well, do you ever watch Married with Children? It's Bud Bundy. And then he pulls out of his ass. He's like, do you know... Bobby Jacoby. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking yep, about? Bobby. Okay. And so Tommy had been out to LA the week before. Tara was out here working and kind of breaking into the, the business. And she was dating a guy named Steve Burton, who was on uh, General Hospital. It's actually 95 that came out here. Yeah. Okay. So two years before. Yep. And ends up hanging out with Bobby because of Steve. And Bobby and Dave have been close friends forever and ever. So he knew that connection. Right. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course I know Bobby. He was part of that Tremors success yeah, and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. 
But what happened was in 95, it came out and uh, Tara was friends with, you know, a bunch of TV yeah. people, okay, yeah. like yeah. in there. And she was dating Jason Quartermain at the time, Steve Burton. So I crashed on their couch and like, you know, and basically was like, hey, I'm going to be an intern. So I wind up being an intern for Viacom and MTV. This is why you're going to OSU, right? That's like yes, the summer. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, let me come out and see if I want to live in New York or LA when I'm done with college and see what I want to do. You're from Jersey. I'm originally. from New Jersey, okay. yeah. Right outside New York City. So I'm a bridge and tunnel person, as they call it in the city. But New York's my backyard. So how I met Bobby Jacoby was after working at Viacom, and I basically did two weeks there, and I fucking hated it. I hated the person I was an intern for, and I'm like, I'm out. So I just want to hang out now and just kind of do what the actors do, which is nothing, and kind of go out and party. So we go out to some parties, and I meet Mario Lopez, Natasha Sigarotti or Sigliotti or something like that, Danielle um, Harris, who was a big child star, and um, Bobby Jacoby. And, oh, he did this movie, Tremors, and stuff like that. Cool. Well, Bobby was the only one that was cool to me because Tara wasn't famous at the time. She was aspiring did some small uh, recurring spots on, um, what's that famous soap opera, not uh, General Hospital? Days of Our Lives. Days of Our Lives. Yeah. Okay, so she got to meet with some of the crew and got to know some of them. That's how she met Steve. So she was dating Steve, and Bobby was the only one that would hang out with me. We would go to the parties. Someone's like, oh, who's this guy? Well, he's not a fucking actor, or he's not Spielberg's friend or kid, <laughs> so they didn't want to hang out with me. So Bobby was the only one that would hang out with me. So we wind up getting like really messed up one night. We're at a party up in the hills where it was empty. You know, Vladi Divac and Robert Ori show up. You know, it was typical <laughs> Beverly Hills. You know, big party in, in, the, in, the, in the, the hills hell, and everything. Yeah. And so we wind up getting, you know, messed up. He's like, let's go have some food late night at Jerry's Deli. So we go to Jerry's Deli and then we get into like some kind of altercation or tiff. Very 90s LA. Yeah. Bobby Brown. <laughs> yeah. So next thing you yeah. know, like, Oh my God. So he was saying something, bumped in, like ate, like picked up a fry off of Bobby's table or something like that. And like, he just walks around I'm like, who the fuck are you? I don't yeah. care if you're Bobby Brown and his bodyguards got in our way. And yeah. oh, long story short, I'm like, I never forgot it. And I wrote in my hat, like, fuck LA. I'm like, I'll never come back to this shithole. And I wore like a Mets hat or something like that. And yeah, when I first <laughs> met you, you were very anti LA. Yeah, I hated yeah, it. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, fuck this place. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But next thing you know, like, I meet you. Can you imagine you meet this guy? He, I, he, you know, he's totally, we're in, he's from New Jersey, went to Ohio State. That's all I really know about him. And he pulls out the name of, like, one of my really good friends to, yeah. like, confirm that I'm telling the truth that Dave's coming. It's a small world. And we had a great time that summer. We, one, that was one of the best experiences of my Ever. whole life. Ever. We made 16 short films. Uh, we all rallied and helped each other. We have, I have a bunch of great pictures. We had so much fun. And we did a lot of partying going out too, which was a lot of fun too. It was great. Yeah. It and, was... It's, and it's funny, we were just talking. Dave, one of his movies that he made, his final picture was um, Natasha Leggero. He cast her. She was like the lead girl in it. Mm -hmm. And then she went on to become, you know, a pretty famous comic and stuff, which is kind of like, was awesome. I mean, yeah. I love that, that part we, of the story. We had a very special group and, you know, we were very lucky to do what we did. We did things that would never get away with today. and was pre running around with cell phones everywhere. Yeah. Because Married with Children was such an iconic show at the time, we were able to do things like shut down Times Square. What? Without a film permit. Literally, we closed off one street corner and we got to shoot. A limousine would come back up, up and we'd have the cops now be like, hey guys, you guys have no permit. And I'm like, and Dan's like rolling, time to go talk to him. And I'm like, hey guys, we got Bud Bundy over here. They're like, really? Can I just take a picture with him real quick? And you guys, can, I got it. And we would do that. Tommy would like, like, be like, you guys can't film here. And I'd be like, Tommy, go. To, Tommy had the gift of gab, right? And 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 I'd say, Tommy, go talk to them. Go talk to them, Tommy. And Tommy's like talking to them. And while he's talking, we're filming. And by the time yeah. he's done and everybody's taking a picture with Dave, we're done shooting the scene. Oh, that's so, so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. So, yeah. So when you, so you guys both went to this film school and it was a summer, yeah, summer program. Yeah, Okay, program, right. so were you, obviously you'd been in LA. You're like, fuck this place. It's fucking weird. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> Being from here, it's a weird place to be. <laughs> but, but I love it. But once you went back to New York and then you're in film school, what was your plan to become, like, did you want want to come back to LA? And yeah. So what happened was when I graduated at Ohio State, I graduated finance and, and economics. So I wanted to be a trader. And so I did my two-week observation in the, in the pits. So to do futures trading, you got to go through this whole 
two week training to get your book of business and to buy your seat. So I was about to buy my seat. And as you're about to buy your seat, which was then was like $50,000. Now I think it's like 300,000. It's crazy what it costs just to pay to play, if you will. I go back to my dad and I'm like, I, there's no way I want to do this. This is terrible. This guy's beating this rich kid for like a half of a point, to go out a quarter of a point on everything he's buying. This kid's losing money every day, but he's coming back with a new purse every day to get his legs. And this guy's just milking him. I'm like, I can't deal with that. So I told my dad that I'm like, at least if I make a bad movie, you could hold it. It's tangible and you could watch it. Okay. <laughs> and then you have an opinion, whether it sucks, you love it or you hate it, whatever you're going to have, it, something that comes from that. And that's what was the, was the turning point for me. I'm like, well, I want to go to film school. So he's like, you got to graduate Ohio State, get your economics degree. You'll fall back on that more than you know, which is true. And then that's when I applied and I'm like, well, I, you know, I don't want to go to NYU for four more years. I want to do something intensive. And that's when I went to New York Film Academy. And the whole time he's like, I really hate LA. And I'm telling him, I'm like, Tommy, if you want to be a filmmaker, you got to come out to LA, right? <laughs> and he's, he was on the fence. He was on the fence. But literally a month later, you were out here. You know, it was great. I mean, it's as I'm thinking about it now, I mean, we really formed this really intensive connection over this two, three month period in New York. And, you know, I didn't know, you know, a lot of times people come into your life and you don't know if you're ever going to see. And then it's true. you've moved out here. And for the last 25 years, you have been one of my, you know, solid amigos. You are. You yeah. are the catalyst and probably the most influential person in my life that made me move out West oh, man. to. Wow. He you, always says that to me. To, no, but that's to, yeah. awesome. to really, look, you have a sister who was aspiring at the time. Nothing was really going on with her. I literally, she got into Ohio State and was like, she's going to go. My parents were like, okay, enough's enough. You have to go to school. We helped get her in. She got in. In 95, I made my fraternity house, Beta Theta Pi at Ohio State. I was hazing my pledges to write every day. They had to write a letter to Days of Our Lives asking the candy striper who was Tara's character to come back on. Oh my God. So and I, and oh my God. they got That's flooded. So, so there was like a group of like 25 guys. And for 60 days straight, they had to hand me these letters and I just sent one one thing. Oh, oh, that's so awesome. then they're like, we're the fraternity of Ohio State, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's 128 guys. We watch, we all watch her. We want her back in. So she wind up getting like an arc <laughs> of like 14 or 15 that's episodes awesome. from fan mail. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll Amazing. take credit for that. Amazing. That's great. But like it helped her get her sea legs and everything like that. But after we graduated, I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. And Dan just was totally like, look, I will take you underneath my wings. Like, I can't hang out with my sister all the time. You know, it's kind of a pain in the ass, you know. We, we'll butt heads. I love her to death, but we're either great or we're just totally it's opposites. Family. He didn't need me to take him under his wing. He moved out here and he right. flourished right, right. away. Right, right. Gift away. Gift of the gap. Gift of the gap. Gift of the gap. Right away. But it, it was awesome. And, then, but, you know, and he grabbed a few Ohio State buddies to move out yep, here with him. Right. I, yeah, yeah. I heavily recruited. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. And you moved out here. And um, what were you doing when first, first, first got out here? I worked at an agency. So yeah. uh, I worked on a short film. I knew I didn't want to be an assistant director. Yep. Then I went to Paradigm and worked for six and a half months there. And that's when I got the lead to Kill the Irishman, the book. And then I bought the book in galley form before it was even published. But um, there's some backstories that we have to go back to film school because why we became so close is because we would have to spend literally, I think class started 8 a.m. or It was very intense. It was like 8 yeah. to 5 every day. Right. Five days a week in inside the classrooms and then going outside, but like that, and, and we mandatory. Shooting, yeah. And then you had to work on the weekends. And then we shoot on the so, weekends and, and film at night. And all so, right. yeah. like, I would then have to either take the last train at, like, 1130 back, you know, to Hoboken, Hoboken back to Ridgewood, New Jersey. Or you crashed my apartment a few and times. And that's yeah, where yeah, yeah. I'm like, you sure? Yeah. And then, like, my dad felt so bad. He's like, these fucking guys, are like, either you get, they like you or they're going to kick you out soon. Yeah. <laughs> but Dan would always let me crash. Yeah. You actually let me crash almost all the time. Faustina right. was, like, maybe once or twice. Yeah, yeah. But, like, you always let me crash. So you're, like, he was my amigo. Yeah. So we would put in all this time learning filmmaking. And I thought I was with royalty because I am with Hollywood royalty. His dad, his great grandpa invented- So my grandfather's- Sergei Einstein. My grandfather's cousin is Sergei Eisenstein. I don't know if you know who that is, Jessica. He invented cutting film. So basically- oh. editing. Before, editing. Basically <laughs> editing. But before <laughs> Sergei Eisenstein, they had to, uh, you know, they set up the camera, they shoot, then they move it and they shoot it again. Yep. He was the first person to cut film. 
He invented the expansion of time and film. He invented the montage, the famous scene of the baby carriage going down the steps. That was yep. him. Wow. He basically invented the modern music video. So the funny thing is we're in um, this class at New York Film Academy. And, you know, I'm used to be hanging out with Dave and everywhere we go, people are like kind of starstruck by Dave. And we're in this class and the teacher like doesn't give a shit. He's like, you're related to Sergey Eisenstein. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's like, like in Hollywood. Yeah, and I, now I'm thinking like, I'm going to Hollywood. Yeah. And I know Dan. Yeah. I'm yeah. 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 You know, yeah. yeah. Dave's. Great. Yeah, yeah. But Dan, I was like, this is great. And so, so right, before, right at that time, though, that's when Tara was filming The Big Lebowski, which was really kind of a break, huge breakout role for her. So wait, you yeah. moved to L.A. right as your sister was breaking on top of it? So, yeah. he. That's so, big, so when we were at the Film Academy, that's when she was filming Big Lebowski. He was telling me about it. And then, which, by the way, is one of my favorite all-time movies yeah. of all time. I call but, my kid the dude. But, the yeah, thing. right when he moved out here, that's when it was coming out. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Let's go back to New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because some of those times we had, they would literally say, you guys have 20 minutes, go shoot a scene. And we're like, of course, like Dan, Dave, and Justin and I were like, what do we do? We're like, all right. Dan's like, Tommy, go. Dave, get ready. And and so my job was, I was the talent coordinator. So I would immediately <laughs> have to go. And luckily in Union Square Park, there's Wilhelmina and Ford Modeling Agency, literally like a block and a half over from where the school was. So you'd have... One out of every 10 people would be this gorgeous person walking, male or female, on the street. And so naturally, we would ask every girl, I'm like, hey, do you want to be in a, in a short film real quick? Well, the thing is, I, I be, again, being around Dave for so long, I was I knew how to use it. And I, and I showed Tommy one time, and then he was off to the races. He was running. He had no problem going up to these, like, Ford models and being like, <laughs> hey, do you know Bud Bunny? You want to be in his movie? Come on exactly over here. Right. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, and yeah. finally, oh like, can I get my friend, like, uh, let me check with the producer. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Oh, yeah. It was oh awesome. Yeah. And then, so we took that and we ran around New York City like idiots with, we don't care. And we could do things that were like, oh, I didn't know you have to get that. I didn't know you have to do that. Oh, really? Well, can we just finish the scene and we'll just move on? So there were things that we were doing that we were way ahead of our time doing, right. like deferring the film permit. And we were like right. the only ones like willing to spend a few bucks on our movies. That's right. We did, you know, so. We, we even tried to do color film, but there was uh, like, don't do ever uh, do color film. Yeah. We're like, oh yeah. man, these are good. After we're done, it was work hard, play hard. Yeah, so it was, it was. Now this is where like, okay, now where are we going tonight, Dan? Well, Dave said we got a, a reservation at Sky Bar, yeah, you know, and oh like, oh, okay. So we would go to New York City. The Spy Bar, right? Spy Bar, yeah, whatever. Spy Bar, yeah. Okay, Sky Bar is out. Uh, LA, yeah. 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 So we go to Spy Bar, and then all of a sudden we get in, you know, big long line. Dave rocks up, and then we get in real quick, and we have a table. And then all of a sudden we're like sitting down, and, you know, we're like, oh, they walk us to another table. And then next to them is like Marcus Allen, Dr. Dre, <laughs> and like all these people like sitting down right next to them. And I'll never forget that. Do you yeah. remember what happened uh, that night? Isn't that the, you knocked over the, the booze? Is that? Well, yeah. yeah. And then I barfed all over Marcus Allen. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Cause like, cause like, My cause, God. because they, cause Dr. Dre orders, Hey bud, let's go do a shot. What do you want? And he's like, I want Johnny Walker blue. So he buys us all shots of Johnny Walker blue. I can only imagine what that costs for oh like, my God. you know, eight yeah. people, oh, it doesn't matter. you know, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I sit there chugging. I'm like, Oh, that's warm as shit. I'm like, Oh, and I couldn't hold it in. I just all over Mark. Tommy, all I remember is like, I think it was oh that night. God. So Dave ends up leaving, right? And it's like, at the end of the night, it's like me and Tommy. It's like, I think maybe Justin was with us. And, you know, it's like, in New York, the bars stay open later. So it's mm -hmm. like four in the morning, right? And we get into, we start out the night in a limo, but we end up in a cab, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's Tommy and I and, and I think Justin was with us and we're taking the cab and Tommy's like passing out and like waking up halfway through the cab ride to like talk shit, but then like pass out again. <laughs> oh man, yeah. yeah was we, we, we had a great time. We did, we did. We so, did. I mean, just just from that experience alone, we we had stripes together. We yeah. did, and we so did. that was like, you know, even in a short period of time of like two months intensive filmmaking, we spent at least, you know, 16 to 17 hours a day during those eight weeks together. We got to become very close. He gave me the confidence nod to come out here. I'll take care of you. I promise you. He was fine on his own. Um, yeah. And it was great. And, and and he did do that and really helped me out. So after I um, started working at Paradigm and everything, and I got that lead to the book, I left Paradigm, started up my own production company, and then pursued the 13-year journey to make Kill the Irishman, which is wow. a story in itself. But then, you know, I felt really good because I got a real piece of property. And that property allowed me to go into almost every door in Hollywood with like a really good, I had a really good screenwriter that wrote something. 
who was representative at the time at CAA. And I knew that was like the big agency. So there was a lot of stuff. And then there was a lot of people that took my project and put their name on it without my name. And like, I just got submitted your movie. I'm like, I own that thing, baby. By the way, I mean, it was a 13 year journey, but I mean, to me, it felt very fast. And you know, this guy, from, from one minute, he's telling me, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm going to move to L.A. What do you think? Should I move to I'm like, Tommy, come to L.A. He's like, I'm, I don't know. I don't know anybody. I have my sister, and I know you, but I don't really know a lot of people. And the next thing I know, the guy's producing a movie starring Christopher Walken, like right. a giant fucking right. movie. <laughs> it was great. It was so, awesome. you, so you were navigating kind of like the business side of Hollywood. Yep, so you, absolutely. You kind of, well, now, out of curiosity, because obviously you went to school for, fi- for economics, mm-hmm. not film, and then realized later that like, this is where I want to be. Did your sister have the same thing with acting? Or was it just like, let's just see, let's try this creative endeavor. Like, where did that come from that you're both now out here? She's following front of front of the house yep. and you're kind of learning all yep. the all the business side. So she's been doing it since she was literally a kid. She did her first movie was in um our turn to Salem's Lot that Robert uh I think Gary Cohen, the writer, the big writer, wrote. Um, and directed uh, Return to Salem's Lot, which is a vampire movie. And that was her big first film that she's ever done. But she was doing kid commercials and McDonald's commercials since she was literally— In Jersey? Or- yeah, they, okay. they picked her out of the mall, like literally walking. Right. Some agent came in and said, like, I want. And my mom's like, oh, I don't know about that. Do you want to go to Barbizon? Yeah, yeah, like- exactly. yeah, you know, like— <laughs> But, like, it was literally, like, she started booking gigs and— her agent wasn't like those where they take like, you know, what's well, going to cost you $1,500 to sign up here. Right. They actually, so she was getting work. And then she went to the professional children's school in New York City where she, her, one of her closest friends, and all those friends are still her friends, Sarah Michelle Geller, Jerry O'Connell, Macaulay Culkin. Right. So she grew up with Donald Faison coming to my house parties when I was in high school because they were like, what's a real party like, you know, because like, everyone's famous in New York. Right. This is a high school party where we're just doing keg stands in the back of my woods. You know, like, like literally, you know, that's what we're trying to do. So she was already embedded in yeah, that so, world. Yeah, so she always did that, you know, and then she felt, and Tara and I are like, you know, a set of, of Irish twins, so we're very close. And I grew up always protecting her and being her best friend, but also she's a big pain in the ass to me too because I'm the oldest. So right. um, there's pros and cons to all that, and I love her to death, but I knew that I needed to have my own social life and couldn't be— you know, responsible for her introducing me to everyone because half the people I'm like, they don't even know who the fuck you are. Like, you know, like <laughs> they don't even want, they don't want to know you. All they know is like now you just did the big Lebowski and they don't even care about me or anybody else from your past or your mom and dad, if they're alive or not. They don't even ask questions like that because they're a fucking a Penske or whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know, and like they're an heir to something. There's no substance there at all. So I could find out the leeches and the jet setters really quick and I think that's what Dan really liked about me is that I was a very honest, true kid that I'm like, that guy's a douche. That guy's, a, you know, I don't care if he's got a fucking $100 million, you know, whatever. I would have liked him in high school for so, sure. Yeah, so for I, sure. I was way different than everybody else, but I'm also an asshole. Me. And, you know, so it's like, <laughs> I get it, you know, that. you know, that's so, what I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and, and like, I would rather have you either like me or hate me. Don't, don't be, yep. Don't give me the gray area in between, yeah. you know, because I know you're going to go talk shit on me. I got to tell you something, though. As he's talking about, and then I get what you say, you say I'm kind of an asshole, but the, Tommy's got these, these core values of family that are, like, stronger than anybody you'll ever meet. He's Irish. He's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> his parents, who are no longer with us, rest their souls, they were the most welcoming, the most inviting, and I see what you're doing with your kids, the, the dad that you are, and... You know, being, it's funny because when we're talking about introducing Tommy and I said introduce him as a husband and a father because that's really a huge part of who he is besides being a producer, besides being Tara Reed's brother. He's right. he's a father and he's not only that, he's made, you know, he's got this, what is it, Dad's Night podcast. Yep, we and we're going we're gonna to get into yep. that, but it's such, it's being a dad is such a part of who you are. You're a coach, you're a dad, you're, it, and, and it, I know that it comes from your dad too. Absolutely, it yeah. comes from my dad yeah. and, um. Even back in film school, you would talk about the business side of how important it was in Hollywood because your dad would manage a lot of the wealth mm-hmm. for a lot of big yep. people out here. Yep. And so being an accountant to understand the money, there's it's you always say it's show business for a reason. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you embedded the business side of learning how to be a producer. So I knew that in order to be a good producer in Hollywood, you gotta not only 
pay your dues and start from a mailroom and eat the shit and live off of $380 and go to Taco Tuesday off of Wilshire, you know, for a long time. But you then had to be respectful of it's a process, your time will come, but you have to understand the business. And those that can endure will be rewarded. And this is a funny thing too. I mean, Tommy met me, you know, and I'm, you know, my background, my dad was in, in the yeah. business and, yep. you know, Tommy says, when I move, move out there, you're going to, you know, kind of like take me in your wing. You're going to introduce me to people. Last year, a friend of mine's trying to make a movie. I'm like, we got to go talk to Tommy. He knows how to get a movie made. You know I mean? Yeah. What, how it the tables, full how the tables have turned. Yeah. And before we get into what you're doing now, I want to talk about one other movie made that I absolutely love, which is I Know That Voice. Hats off to John DiMaggio right there, yeah. uh, Bender of Futurama. He is, you know, a staple, another, like a very pinnacle guy growing, you know, paying my dues up in Hollywood at the time and everything, mm -hmm. been a buddy for a very long time. He is in that industry and not many people know about what goes on in voice acting and uh -huh. what goes on with that. And now the surge of video games becoming $200 million opening weekends for Halo and stuff like that. So uh, I know that voice is kind of like a master class and everything voiceover. I mm -hmm. just asked you if you did voiceover because yeah. you have a great voice. Okay, so that's interesting. Yeah, and like we literally had to cut 186 one-hour interviews into a two-hour documentary, which wow. is really hard to yeah. see. How do you get a soundbite from June Ferre, who's one of the greatest, you know, little uh, in the original Dr. Seuss and, and, and the Grinch. She's like Tiny Tina, oh, you right, know what I mean? Right, like. Right. And then she's like, so her voice goes on and on and everything. But she and all these other actors that are from Mel Blanc's No Blanc's Son and how you man of a thousand, 10,000 voices to Matt Groening to just literally Nancy Cartwright. Oh, yeah. It was like every person could be a master class. It's an so, amazing movie. Okay. Like, if you ever yeah, get a chance so to check it out, it really stuff. is. It, yeah. it won the 2013 Annie Award, which is like the Oscars for, for animation as best documentary. Um, so thank you for acknowledging that. It's a great movie. I really um, enjoyed it a lot. Really, it's really. It's great. Good. So what you need to have here on your podcast yeah. is have a bowl of green apples. Yeah. Because when you bite into a green apple, it takes the pectin out of your mouth and mouth clicks go away. Wow. Wow. If you go to any voiceover in the Valley, which is, they're all like lined yeah, up yeah, on yeah, Burbank yeah. Yep. right there. Mm -hmm. They have, in, in the green room, they have a bunch of green apples. You don't yeah. want to see that. Oh, wow. Interesting. Because everyone walks in with their coffee. Yeah. yeah. But the milk is what gives you the mouth clicks. So, but like, I mean, it was, make, it, it yeah. was make one weird. movie, you become an expert. Oh but, my goodness. Yeah, it was fun. So, um, a minute. Um, I, I love, I love being part of the industry. Yeah. And So um, when you moved to LA, you started working in it. Now you've done all these movies, but you started to mention something about like, the early years in LA, we've heard about your New York years, the early years, your sister just did a big sh movie. You're living up in the hills, Runyon Canyon, yep. having parties. Yep. Now that you've like experienced the good yeah. stuff of LA, like what, well, how, how was that? So I, I, I was still living um, at the Pinnacle, which is a very famous, um, like first move to LA, I'm going to go live in Hollywood. And you're literally like a block and a half north of Hollywood Boulevard. Mm -hmm on Runyon Canyon, the street, um, and there's a Pinnacle, the last apartment complex on the right-hand side of right before the entrance of Runyon. I think I knew It's, it's called the Pinnacle. <laughs> and everyone walked there. You always see the famous people. And so I recruited like literally about six or seven Buckeyes to move out here right. and endure or see what the hell they wanted to do in every kind of industry. So from actors to accountants to whatever, just come out in LA and hang out. And there'd be like three or four guys crashing on a, a couch, you know, while two guys had their bedrooms and it was like rotating people that come yeah. in for this month. By this time, Tommy was on his own. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm like, right, dude, right. You're, you're good. Like, yeah. You're good. Basically after living in the pinnacle from 97 to 98, my dad's like, you know, for the amount of money of like 1500 bucks a month, you know, you're paying for your one bedroom, you can buy a, a condo or a, a one bedroom apartment. I'm like, I'll just do that. So then I wind up <laughs> buying an apartment down the street for like 190,000, three years later, flip it for 400. Had Hollywood started going, uh, start, yeah. started rising in that late 90s. So did we. Yeah. And so that's when, like, you know, things started popping. Tara's career was really starting to get going. She had success with Big Lebowski, then did a movie uh, that was about to come out about high school and it was American Pie. And then she, you know, she, she started getting it. And once I knew that, oh, she went from a small, like, you know, agent to now, ICM and, right. you, know, you know, Adam Vennett over and, in Endeavor. And that now, was like, a crazy time, too, because she was, her star was rising. 
But at times, you know, she was taking some beatings in the press. How was that for you? How did that well, affect I you? Well, I mean, I can give you a great example. I remember I knew the time that she finally hit it was when she had her birthday party at Mike DeLuca's house up, uh -huh. in, the, up in the canyons. Yep. <laughs> Who's a big producer. Huge producer. Yeah. I had New Line at the time. Yep. And she was hanging out with Paris Hilton. Mm. And she allowed me to bring like six of my college buddies, mm. you know, buddies that moved out from L.A. or, for, or out to L.A. from New York and, and Ohio and so I, we would be there, like her core, because yep. like she, the other ones were, you know, and then here comes Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, you know, and Paris Hilton's got a, a pocket full of like 300 pills of ecstasy and like handing <laughs> them out at the party. It was crazy. And I mean, it, literally people, it, the Legion of Doom. You know, you off, I mean, and that's when you, it's funny because once you start to make it and she really, you know, she was, her star was rising. And now the press is like really interested in her personal life, which is like, and yeah. that's, and that's like, and of course they want to kind of, they want to build you up to take you down kind of thing. And, and, and so I think she was going through that and maybe not even realizing that she was going through that at the time. Well, that's when Dublin's on Sunset was going off. Yeah. Pantera right. Sarah. And, right. was, oh, yeah. and they talked yep. about that whole book yep. or whatever. She, I remember that vividly, like trying yep. to get her to get us in and me and my stupid buddies because Tara's already in there and I'm just the brother. Why don't you call me? You know, yeah, exactly. Because you were already up there too with Vince Vaughn <laughs> and all those guys, right? <laughs> but like, that's when that whole era of the late 90s, or, yeah. you know, that was a different part of Hollywood. Yeah. It was so fun. We yep. had the best time out yep. here. So fun. Because not everyone had the cell phones to come out with cameras and everything. Yep. So it was like, still had some intimacy, some privacy. Yep. Tyra was like hanging around people that, you know, were friends with Leonardo DiCaprio. So- it was a really fun time to be her brother and run with her to a lot of parties at the time. It, yep. it really was. I mean, yep. and I got to, I'm a, it was always like Tara plus like six and her six was like me and my buddies from Ohio State. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I put you on the list because I briefly worked for Rick Calamaro. Oh yeah. Like I just did his Friday list sure. and like all the publicists would call me yeah. and did that. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was like Tommy Reed plus eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some stupid. That sounds about like, right. You know, it, it, it was like, how are you going to get eight dudes in? Yeah. yeah. And we would, yeah. we would get in and we would just have fun because we yeah. were just young 20 year olds and just being able to have access to like very highbrow celebrity parties in Hollywood and it was just great. And yeah. then, you know, and yeah. just knowing these guys too, it was just, it was just so much fun. He was off and running for the minute he Then, then yeah. I didn't want to leave. Now I'm like, I kind of like it here, you know? Right, yeah. right. You're like, these are nice houses up in the hills. Yeah, but I knew I didn't want to live up there because of the mudslides, which- I think um, I'm moving down right. to the beach. But yeah. that's where I did. I'd always go down to like Hermosa and have the best time ever. And, you know, you were just like, ah, oh, let me get down there. And then you have a totally different world down in the South Bay. And that's why I love it so and much. And you yeah. come down to the South Bay- you get married, you yep. have some kids, you're now this father, husband. Tell us about that. Best thing that ever happened in my life was get married. Yeah. And I have the greatest wife in the world. You do. Met her up in San Francisco, so I met her in California too. Right. Uh, we wind up living a block and a half over from each other in Manhattan Beach that we never even knew it. So funny. in 02, when I moved down, when I sold Hollywood, go went down to Manhattan Beach, had this place, and I'm like, there's no way I can afford like then like a $950,000 house. So my dad's like, well, go get your stoner college buddies to live and rent some rooms out. So that's exactly what I did. I had to rent out like every room so I could afford to <laughs> want to be a producer still and then pay for my mortgage and taxes and then be able to, okay, well, now I got to get some odd jobs to just pay for my livelihood. So um, living down the South Bay No. 2, went up to just playing the, you know, back to Hollywood, living in the South Bay, loved it so much down there. I knew I wanted to raise my family down there because it's very, very communal for family, Manhattan Beach especially. In 08, I went up to San Francisco while taking a break from making uh, The Whiffler, which I just shot that movie that I directed and produced. And I was in the editing room for 10 weeks straight. I'm like, I got to get the hell out of here. I went up to San Fran, met my wife at a bar. And then finding out she was from New Jersey, she loves football. It was just like, oh my God, how do I keep this one? And uh, lucky enough, she said yes to marry me after nine months. She's like, I, I, I have to date I still, for at least a year. boggles my mind. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I married up. I married the greatest girl ever. Um, but she's a gorgeous a, wife. She's gorgeous a wife, sweetheart. She smart. loves football. She puts up with him. Yeah, I mean, puts up with me. Yeah. She's an amazing mom. You know, she's my partner in crime. She, 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 she believes in me, believes everything we're doing. Great mom, um, loves the family aspect too. Uh, comes from a really good family, all from New Jersey. And there's very Wait, much- her family's from New Jersey too? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's hilarious. And just a sweetheart, a yeah. sweetheart. Yep. That's great. So they're from um, also North Jersey, but from Bridgewater. So 
she was literally the Lincoln Tunnel, and I was like the the George Washington Bridge to come over. Oh my gosh! Into New York literally City, literally bridge. Yeah, and yeah. Tunnel. yeah, we're bridge yeah. and tunnel. Yeah. So, uh, how long have you guys been together? Since 2008, but married since 2010, so oh, okay. 13 yeah. years, going on 14 years. Yeah. And you two have kids, two kids, great. Eleven and and uh, eight. That's something else. Yeah, boy, girl, yep. snipped, done. <laughs> but now and he's turned that into like, are you still doing the the podcast? We took a break. So my buddy Chris Parrish, who's my uh, partner on Dad's Night Podcast, yeah, we just wanted to do a podcast that was like, hey, let's bring in celebrity dads. Yep. But let's like maybe just rip off like, what are we promoting right now? But let's just talk about. You got to where you are and then talk about dad stuff. Yep. And that was like the coolest thing is identify like, okay, I know you're in, you just won three Super Bowls, Ty Law, and you were in the middle of like going through the airport and your kid has a breakdown. How are you going to handle that? Yeah. You know, like, you know, no one cares about your Ty Law. Yeah. You know, like, right. what are you going right. to do? Your, but, your kid but certainly that, doesn't. Tommy, yeah. I mean, Tommy also is like, you know, he's f- created this kind of like community of dads too. He does this big yep. dad's fishing trip every year. Yep. He does these like couple dad's nights where like, um, you know, he'll give away tomahawk steaks. That's and, right. Like, I love that. Yep. You like, identify with yeah. being a dad he in a really great does. way. Yeah. It's a it's, wonderful thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a communal thing and dads go through a lot of stuff. And yeah. once you get married, you're usually the low man on the totem pole. And just to kind of get together to talk about problems or issues that are happening you know, or just talking about, hey, I have an idea. What do you think about this idea? Like recently we had a, a VIP seltzer tasting this past Thursday. And it was, I became a 1% owner in the company. And I'm like, well, if I want in, I bet you there's about another, you know, at least 10 dads that I know will want the same thing that I got in. So before you go pre-Series A, fly yeah. out, bring out a lot of your product. So they brought out like 36 cases of beer, or like a whole thing of it and or of, of seltzer. And I'm like, I'm not a seltzer guy. So after a couple, you know, we'll probably hit the Coors Light, but eventually, like, give us your pitch. We're gonna be Shark Tank, and it was That's it was a dead Shark Tank. And he's he's like that. He's, yeah. He always has these products. I still I have the Cool Cabana. I absolutely yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Tommy always has like a product. Put in the code Tommy Rocks, you're gonna get yep. a discount. Like, I can get that sponsor. That's he, right. That's he, right. He, no, he will. He, <laughs> he'll he will like. I have a friend like you. I, yeah. he, he will get on the phone with the company. He say, "I love this thing. I got." 20 friends that'll uh, that'll buy it, give me a code, so then get a discount, I'll yeah. promote it to all yeah. my friends. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. so the guys did great. They, they wind up raising like 150, 200,000 that night. Yeah. There was like that's another great. eight guys that went in that wanted the same value and everything I mean, that I got. I have there. another business that Tommy's helped me with in the same way, yeah. unbelievably. So. That's right. But that's fantastic. What else now, is going on? Now he does all the lights and now yeah, yeah. For, for a Jew coming down yeah, to, yeah. to Manhattan Beach. Like he does, that, all, huh? he does yeah. all the Christmas lights in, like in yeah. Manhattan Beach. It's good. It's great. Tell me about what's going on now. What movies, projects, what's happening? Well, um, I'm, you know, I'm full-time at Tongle, which is like a, a global econ- global creator economy. Mm-hmm. So basically Tongle works making all the social and digital content for large brands from Nike, Lululemon, Lego. They're actually making Pharrell's movie uh, about his life. That's a documentary they're, they're going to do on Pharrell, but oh, it's wow. all on Lego. So that's where anybody who's a filmmaker or an ideator, um, editor can raise their hand and be put into the creative aspects of pitching on companies, RFPs basically. Mm-hmm. So at an agency, Deutsch, WDB, you know, 72 and Sunny, you have yeah. to be part of their roster and get in there. And then you have to be handed a project to go do. And then you have to come up with your treatment. It's like an open community where anybody can pitch their creative aspect of it. So that interesting. Um, so that's kind of what's my my focus. And then there's a bunch of documentaries that I want to go. There's like four documentaries I want to produce. And I'm starting to write a horror film right now with uh, my buddy, Mike Kersey. So there's a lot of things that are going to be put from the back burner to front burner. But yeah, just constantly doing stuff and constantly having irons on the fire and yeah. trying to help Ohio State win a national championship by getting better recruits. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, I'm working on that too. So I know you are. I'm working on the NIL you collector are. for yeah, them, yeah. trying to get them yeah. uh, Bob Evans and I have to be NIL sponsors. So you're a doer. He is a doer. You're a doer. I think you guys come from a very unique um, upbringing and to hear about when I saw you starting to ask, you know, questions, I'm like, what do you, what's your podcast called? 90210 Who One O is a really cool name. Yeah. I think you got some traction there. And awesome. I'm, I'm thankful you were, you know, you, you asked me to come on board. I appreciate board, you coming you know. on, man. Hopefully I at least make an in, 
an internet clip somewhere. I like it. We got some <laughs> reels. Yeah, 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 for we'll sure. We'll make sure Check it's it a good one. No, yeah. it's been so nice to get to know you because now I'm like, I, I know you started some stories that we need to finish once yes. we go off camera. Yeah. See, for like, sure. I, I'm like, there's a Hugh Hefner story somewhere. Yes, in there. there is. Tell, tell a Hugh Hefner well, story. Tell the Hugh Hefner story. For yeah, sake. I mean, that's so, a good one. Let's so, end on that one. Ohio State was playing UCLA in 2001, and that's where Tower literally did American Pie one or two. And so I think it was. One came out, was huge hit. Two is about to come out that next year or something like that. So Tower brought in Sean William Scott, who's Stifler. So they would, uh -huh. so I knew they were coming to my party. Um, and a buddy knew some girl and that could get to Hugh Hefner. And they were going to make a stop by for sure. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> so I tell Ohio State friends, I'm like, I think Hugh Hefner is going to come to our party and everything like that. Well, I knew that he was coming when they told us you got to save... 20 seats in a corner. I'm like, oh shit, he's really gonna come. And it would blow my Buckeyes' minds. Like, they're Stifler for American Pie. And then when Hugh Hefner comes in yeah. and brings in like all those broads, I mean, sorry, playmates, <laughs> that's, that's my jersey coming out right there. That, the 90s, me didn't yeah, even notice. Yeah, that's exactly. the thing. <laughs> well, listen, that, that was where he was on the height of going up battle. He had a resurgence. It was huge. And that was the time, right? Yeah. There, in 2001. Oh, yeah. yeah, he yeah, had yeah, the girls yeah. next door. Yeah, and he was yeah, like yeah, yeah, living yeah. his last good years. And yeah. I don't know. So I think Tara, I don't know if she was with Carson Daly or not by that time, uh -huh. but like, I think he, Tara and Carson might've been together at the time yep. too. Yep. So I don't know if Carson was there too, maybe, but that's, so I, and maybe that's how it was all connected. But like, it was like that Friday before the Saturday for the Ohio State UCLA game, which we lost, but it was still to this day, people are like, I can't believe you went out there and you had a party and you after a game. So it was pretty fun. It kind of yeah. solidified like... Okay, I'm in, I'm in L.A. now. Yeah. I mean, once you've got Hugh Hefner at a party, you've made it. Tommy Reed, I love you, man. Your friendship is something I cherish. What a what a beginning we had at the New York Film Academy. You moving out here, so much success in films. I can't be more proud of you. But not just that, success as a father and, and a husband. One of the greatest people I know. And thanks for being on the podcast, man. I really, really appreciate it. DM gonna... them. Slide into their DM and say, what's it cost to... Put out. This was brought to you by VIP Hard Seltzer. VIP Hard Seltzer. <laughs> exactly. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? So let's start getting some sponsorships, people. Go. Tommy's our new agent. Well, that wraps up this episode of Nine Oh Who I Know. Thank you so much to our guest, Tommy Reed, for coming. It's been great to get to know you. Uh, we'll be back soon with another episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find us on all the platforms. If you want to see what we look like, you can go to YouTube. I can't stomach watching myself, but I hope you enjoy it. See you next time.